Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Reserve yeah. time. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Dire team pick. Uh, hello and welcome. Lyrical is actually casting this. He's just having technical difficulties, so hopefully all of you can hear us loud and clear. Welcome to Star Ladder iLeague Series 13. We've got E-Wolves versus Digital Chaos, a match I think we're all pretty dang excited for on the America stream. It's a best of three. We're going to be jumping right into it because we've got some bands and picks going out. Of course, Doom Band. Elk. And uh, just so you folks know, that is 1437 standing in for Digital Chaos while they're looking for their fifth. So we're going to be seeing more uh, mercenary action coming out from him. So. Reserved. Uh, and yeah, uh, by the way, apparently I will just do this draft solo because poor Lyrical just fixing his mic just broke. You know how it is. Cat chewing on it or whatever. But um, either way, I think a lot of these picks and bands look pretty standard. But this means that Doxia is in the pool. And we're also going to be having Wyvern, Dazzle, a lot of those strong heroes out. And yeah, it's the Wyvern first pick Radiant for E-Wolves. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. There we go. Well, it's all fixed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who we are, that might help. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's looking pretty standard. Something I'm really interested to see. Elite Wolves tend to, they, overall, when you look at all of the matches they've ever played as a team and some of these players, they pick earlier lineups. Um, and so I'm really interested to see what they go for here because DC has a lot of really experienced players on it. And if you give them, like, if you just go for an early lineup against them where they can pick one that maybe peaks a bit later, they'll probably be able to push it out. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Gyrocopter! Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, and it's something where with the ALK already, the ALK's banned out, maybe folks will decide not to go for the AA here, but you still have to be careful because Digital Chaos could just be picking a Huskar, right? They've got the Dazzle. Doxy, well, Huskar doesn't have great synergy as a carry there. I mean... Husker can be your like your kind of your one carry, and then maybe you go with an Ember Spirit, who's actually your real carry. Who Husker just makes a lot of space for Ten by continually life breaking people. So lots of options there. As you said, A might come out, but they got some bans. Maybe it's just going to be time for them to ban some strong carries that, as you said, they don't have the lockdown for. So Phantom Lancer, Anti Mage, or the Bane. Everybody loves the Bane.
Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh yeah. I mean, Radiant it's also something where Elite Wolves, as I said, they're one of the teams that does some earlier lineups. They're also one of the few teams that actually still run Chen, and they run stuff that's maybe a bit out there uh, compared to other teams. They've run the Legion Commander mid a few times, I think. They'll run the Chen, they'll seconds. run Ogre Magi heroes that I don't think are terribly seconds picked in this meta, so... Oh. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Lena. Dire team pick. Yeah, he's someone who, early on, I mean, he's very squishy as long as you can get up in his face. And if you burst him, certainly he doesn't have his magic output. But it's kind of odd. I really do feel like banning the AA, maybe they just did it for the Dazzle, and potentially Doxy, a very commonly a hero that goes for a mech, it just, it feels a bit odd to ban the AA just for the Dazzle, so I'm kind of expecting maybe an Undying, or maybe that Husker that we talked about from Digital Chaos, although into an Earthshaker, you can still definitely kill the Earthshaker, but that's now starting to have, E-Wolves have a bit of lockdown, that is the one thing Huskar can't take, so... Ten seconds remaining. Mm. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, I feel like, as you said, she can be played anywhere, and part of that is she has a flash farming mechanism. If you play her in the mid lane, of course, she's going to get that Yules, then the Ags up very quickly. But if you play her in a support role, she can get both of those items at pretty decent timing either way. I am a big fan of the Windrunner mid. A lot of people uh, think it's kind of cheesy, this patch, but she's undeniably a strong hero. And I don't think Digital Chaos have shown too much of what they've got, so they really could be flexible. I certainly do like the vacuum into light strike away array that we're seeing here. And uh, it just also could have been, as you may, I think you already touched on it a bit, but Winter Wyvern's ult uh, can help set up a nice AA blast. And it's one of the few where Wyvern's ult does 70% damage reduction on people attacking the cursed unit. But AA blast is a debuff that you don't mind if they don't, like you want them to take max damage, but even if they just get the debuff, it helps your team fight a lot. And it's Bane. They got a lot of purple heroes here for digital chaos. I'm just saying. No. Oh. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Invoker. Radiant team ban. Uh, 
So... Seconds remaining. Oh, no, 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 I mean, obviously there's that factor, you can Five get rid of uh, a lot of people's mana with the EMP. It's It really depends on the game plan, right? If you're going for... Uh, Exalt makes you win the lane. It's sometimes hard to set up the Sun Strikes without some backup, but they do have an Earth Shaker who, you know, you can finish someone off, it makes it a bit easier to hit the Sun Strike, especially if, if Gyrocopter's getting very aggressive on people, but making them be almost dead, like often happens in lane with a Doxy who surges away, that's also easy Sun Strike targets, and it certainly helps you win the lane. Um, if E-Wolves decide no, our game plan is that we're gonna fight early, they might prefer the Quas Wex just because it does lend itself more to a team fight, unless the Invoker gets really ahead in levels in which case it doesn't matter. So I, I think it's really just going to depend, and Smash probably has a preference, which I wish were some stats I could pull up right now. I'm like, excuse me while I go stalk his Dota buff, see, see what he plays, because a lot of it also comes down to that. Um, I'm sure Smash can play either, but he probably prefers one greatly and is just going to defer to that. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team mm -hmm. pick. <sighs> Dire team pick. I mean, we all knew it was coming, right? Like, we knew... Ugh. It's still disgusting, even though we knew it. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Queen mm -hmm. of pain. <laughs> well, it is something where in lane if you can deny the Huskar any farm, you know, you'll you'll call that a win. Huskar's really not a hero as well who farms creeps excellently. So disrupting that a little bit, he's you know, he's obviously got no wave clear. He's here to kill heroes. The other potential upside I see for E-Wolves with this draft is they don't have uh they have much better team fight, it seems like just looking at their heroes than maybe Digital Chaos does. Yes, Huskar can pound a lot of spears into people, but his setup for that is kind of relying on a nice vacuum into a nice light strike array. As you said, they've got a couple of things here to break the Fiend's grip. Where's the rest of the lockdown? They got some slows. So remaining. maybe they can outplay them on the team fights for Elite Wolves, but into a Huskar, it's always dangerous because even if you outplay the other team, you may all end up dead just because you took too many burning spears in the process. Prepare for battle. Where, which, no, it's Eo. Which, which, who are we talking about? Oh, sorry, I actually do have the names up, so... Um, who, who were you asking about? The Gyro, or...? Oh, God. Uh, and even though the Husker went down, TC getting off to a great start, like, he's he's pretty dang happy with that. Um, they, they got the first blood, he got some nice AoE gold, and I'm pretty sure he'd already bought all of his gold out, so it didn't matter too much. So, very happy. Now, we were saying, who were we worried about? It used to be Stinger. I want to say it's Stinger. We'll, we'll just go with that while I just double check, because I know they had it. Okay, it's Van. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I think it's really ambitious here. Yeah, the Bane's far out. I mean, they're not gonna find it on the Husker. It looks like, oh, they're going for it. Bane, Bane is just dead. They don't even need the smoke. A Fissure on the wrong side, actually, but their ranged heroes, can they get it with the Arctic? They need one more auto, and that's gonna be it. Unfortunate on the Fissure there. So, yeah, and as you're, you're right, it looks like Stinger was removed. Iwo now playing on the hard carry roll. This is kind of interesting because it makes all the stats moot. I was going to mention, Van, of course, does have a somewhat famous gyrocopter in the scene. And, oh, we don't have time to talk. Do you, no, it looks like it'll just be some dewarding shenanigans. No actual engagement. But, yeah, Van's gyro, pretty famous. And so, not going to not gonna have any stats on Iwo's. Yeah, and Smash has, he's, you know, going the cross Wex, so ganking him is going to get a little bit harder for their lineup, and maybe he can even make something happen. There's going to be a nice EMP, and you're right, he's stuck in it because of the Fissure coming out. The hasted M God, he's trying to go and catch him out there. Does he have any other points in something? Oh, he's going to try to suicide the creeps. Will it? Oh, he's got it. That's, oh, okay, never mind. He's dead. M M God drawing the aggro. I actually thought for sure the creeps had it and M God had made a little mistake stutter stepping, but he knew what to do. He was drawing aggro and yeah, a nice kill on the mid and smashes lane. So Invoker traditionally doesn't actually win mid matchups against someone like Alina, but when when you're getting a kill, your odds looking a lot better. Yeah, I also feel like uh, they've done a good job. Lena, unfortunately, doesn't have any ward vision protecting her, while they do have one. Oh, we've got an engagement on the bottom. Invoker's even here! This time the Fissure Connect's gonna be no mana for the Huskar, and they and actually have a cold embrace Masoku. He should be fine. Five spears, he's, he's taking a lot. I, I actually... Okay, he's fine. <sighs> that was close. Yeah. I think if he got, like, one more spear, it actually would have been tick out, and a good job on the Cold Embrace, but that's another nice reason to have the Huskar, obviously. You can burning spears through Cold Embrace. Mm hmm Oh. And we can see, uh, even with the early kill, Invoker having a really hard time CSing. Part of that is because he actually left the lane. But also, just look at the damage difference. This is part of the power of why people go Invoker Exalt. You get so much more damage. And this Invoker is sitting at, you know, 65 damage while your war is already at 72. It's not. It's not easy. And... Will this gank connect? Because they want it. Oh, goodness, there's the EMP, the tornado as well. Even Quop is here. These rotations coming out. Bane gonna see if she can maybe get something onto the Queen of Pain, but I think Quop just gonna walk away. Owie's trying to go for the nightmare, but he's not able to. It's nighttime. No vision. And that'll be that. Yeah. Oh. 
I think also there's... While the rotations are certainly good, I think most of what they're doing is making sure that Smash isn't super losing this lane. And as you're accurately pointing out, both safe laners are kind of not being touched too much. The Husker had a bit of disruption. Other than that, he's now back to having a free lane. And as I say that, though, folks are rotating down. So we're going to be a bit of an Arctic Burn action. I don't think they'll get anything, especially not with Dazzle nearby. Although, Invis Dazzle, probably not the ganking hero that you want as a Husker. Oh! Under attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we have. It's really interesting. I have to say, this Earthshaker, he is being really great about landing his fissures. It is something you mentioned before. Earthshakers have dropped off a bit in popularity in favor of heroes like the Tusk, who, by the way, wasn't in that ban or dropped, unless I'm crazy. I'm pretty sure he wasn't banned. Um, but. It, most people think ice shots, snowball, easier way to set up kills. This Earthshaker is blocking people out with his fissure and maybe going to go for another. Although Bulba on this Darkseer, this is a really hard kill. And instead just drops a vision ward that... Bulba, it's nighttime, so I'm not quite sure if he had vision of that. To deal with the Husker. So you've got you've got two different ways this can go. A lot of it, um, Pop's not getting the worst of farm. She's also not. Okay, she'd get the bounty for a second there. I was worried. She's also not getting the best. If you, her farm were really dominant, I would actually suggest the Orchid here because there are a number of supports and maybe even the dogs here. Um, and. and the Lena, if you're lucky, you can just Orchid pick them off as a Quop, but I don't know if her farm's gonna be good enough. She's hitting good timing on that 6, but her lost hits aren't the best, even though she has a lot of kills. Aghanims, of course, it's great. You can use it more frequently for wave clear if they're pushing at your door, and of course there's always the t uh, Husk, a Huskar to deal with, but you have to hold that thing, that means, and you have to use it to kill the Huskar, because that's when he takes the least magic damage, so I don't know. It, it does make using your ult really rough. Either way, probably going to try to go for both, but if she's poor, she might go for Ags first. It gets rough, though, if you just have the Ags, because you don't have enough mana, and you're going to want a BKB this game, probably, to deal with Husk and Lena, so... Also level 4, it's not uncommon with the amount these supports are roaming, so a lot of the supports are low here, but you know, Wyvern has a super important ult, of course the Echo Slam, even before you have the blink is fantastic. The Weave, great spell, Bane's Fiend's Grip, I mean, these supports need their sixes and whichever side hits them first, we're gonna see probably a few quick pickoffs because of that, so. Um, also this game is really close, I want to stress that, you talked about it, we're 4-6, to six, that's relatively even in the grand scheme of things, but we're also within a 1,000 gold and experience lead for both sides, so Radiant both teams doing really well. Dire structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Oh! Pop's trying to get bait when he'll armor toggle and she misses! She just used a 130 cooldown. I mean, on one hand, it's like you if you didn't use it, it's like you didn't 
use it, you know? I mean, like, if you don't ever black... Sorry. If you don't ever black hole for the first 15 minutes, it's the same as whiffing a black hole. Now, it does key DC into the fact that they won't need to worry about quap alt for another about 150, 115 seconds at this point. So they can maybe play more aggressively, knowing that the quap isn't coming in to back them up. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mm. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, again, Holy Winter's Curse usage, totally fine, they got the kill, and especially since they rotated four heroes there, they needed to get something, otherwise the rotation becomes almost worthless, so a nice job by them getting that on up. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Yeah. It's the damage. Oh, let's see what we've got. Okay, that was it. It's the duration, the distance of the tornado. It's the damage on the tornado, as you said. It's the EMP mana drain. Uh, the, you can't, you can't necessarily split it in this case. And maybe you can argue it would help a bit later against the Huskar. But if you can just avoid those fights until Invoker gets the farm that all the levels more accurately that he needs, you're going to be good. Nice big ancient stack coming out for uh, going to be cleared by the gyrocopter at some point. Iwo, but. Oh, we, we... Okay, that's an invisible dazzle. I was a bit worried. Just... Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, definitely not quite the damage output needed to do this yet. That's another thing that might happen. You have to be a little bit careful about omelette toggling against a gyrocopter. It all depends. I mean, it's only six shots of flat cannon every 30 seconds. But if you're in a teamfight engagement, you know, you go for that omelette toggle, you don't realize gyrocopter, maybe he's the max 1,000 units away and suddenly you're, you're going down. But we have a rotation up top. We have Quop hiding in the trees up there. It has a Dagon. Okay, I don't think we were wrong to not suggest that. It's interesting here, it will maybe help with her pickoff potential. I mean, there are some low heroes right now, but I certainly wasn't expecting that. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mm -hmm. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Yeah, so that's definitely the way I've seen this done before. It's, I, I've definitely attack. seen folks pull the Radiant's I'm going to use a lot of my magic damage on you, Huskar, and then suddenly blow, of course, my uh, other spells. And yeah, I'm... Oh, goodness. Yep. So, and yeah, are you sure this is Van playing on the co-op? Okay, because I have Van on my 
I had I had the team captains. Maybe it's his secondary account because his other account it isn't it isn't his main account. I'm like super confused. But yeah, no, it could. It, let's just say it go with it being Van. Probably is the other reason the Dagon might be nice here is just what he did, although not in that exact scenario. If you can pick off the support for the Huskar, he's not nearly that scary. The Huskar is scary when he's chilling at you know to what like he's he's chilling at like 20 percent health oh we're gonna have a tornado will there be any follow-up doesn't look like it when he's chilling at 200 health also when he's got the guardian greaves buff where he's regening 15 health you know because he's below 20 percent of his health he's got 15 extra armor like that's when he's scary he's got a dazzle backing him up if you kill the dazzle if you kill the bane or bulba all of these supports with something like a dagon immediately maybe you don't have to worry Now, TC, not sure whether this is going to be a Heaven's Halberd, because uh, he's got an Ogre Club. Could be Heaven's Halberd. Could be a BKB. It's not... I think the BKB is actually quite nice here. Obviously, there's an Invoker, there's an Earthshaker, but also so that you're not attacking your allies. Although, yeah, he does have the Burning Spears toggled on. So oh, we're going to be seeing uh, Yules setting up, but the immediate Winter's Curse coming out. Actually, Splinter Blast the wrong target, but Beethoven, he is stuck taking a lot of that. One Nightmare is going to uh, reduce him to the damage. There is a Life Break onto Mizuka, but he immediately drops that ult, and now it doesn't matter. He's going to be going down. There's going to be a short stun onto TC, but he's still taking barely any damage. Sonic Wave, where is it? He just deleted before she can use it. And now Invoker Smash needs to get out of there. He's going to take the dunk, and he has no way out. Cold Embrace isn't going to save him. And Quap even buys back knowing that she has the Sonic Wave, but I think this is too little too late. Yeah, it's... The long story short is E-Wolves are getting Huskard. It's something where they need to now avoid fighting against this guy for a little bit. They need a few items. Obviously, if the Earthshaker had a bit more farm, I mean, he's nowhere near a Blink Dagger, but a bit more farm on the Earthshaker, Invoker having up that Orchid, you can maybe do something in these team fights. But right now, you have nothing to deal with that. Your cooldown, while good damage, has no follow-up because the Queen of Pain gets blown up with her Dagon. I mean, how much health does she have? Probably around... Well, we'll see when she's sworn. She's level 10, so it might be a bit larger. Yeah, I was gonna... Yeah. Sub 900. Yeah. Lost rocket control. Radiance Held middle tower to is under fire. attack. Another problem, I think, unfortunately, is Gyrocopter has maxed Rocket. Normally, that's so it makes sense against a Doxia, but it does mean that he doesn't have the points in Flat Cannon that you would normally want. It's part of why he was having trouble with uh, the stacks and so on. It's taking him so long. Oh, what? Okay, Beto, uh, you are just casually auto attacks down. 
Oh, oh, Shaker, that's that's fine. Just Lena things. Also, she has a Shadow Blade. I mean, this is how you kill a Quap. So, it's looking really rough for Elite Wolves. I have to imagine. Oh, and they even steal the catapult, TC. What a guy. <laughs> Now this catapult has 1400 health as well, that's actually a pain. So, he's just gonna chill here, they might even burn, like he might loot- no, so he's gonna be fine. I was thinking maybe Quop will think about burning one life there, but TC wouldn't care if that were the case, so. Yeah, no, and I think it's a perfectly fine pickup here. You want to keep the Quap nice and low. She's already had to expend a buyback. She is, you know, fifth on the net worth charts. You keep her down. It puts her further and further away from that Ags. That Ags is what they're afraid of pushing into. And so if they can shut her down, if they can get this lost tier two, they really don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. I don't think- I, I really think he just did it for the docks here in lane just because it's only 0.6 seconds added to the stun. Yeah, that can make a lot of difference in Dota, but not sure if it's going to here. I think Earthshaker having a bit more farm of course would help, but uh, that's, that's never gonna happen. Now, Invoker has a gem up. He has half of an Orchid, and uh... I don't know what he's gonna do with all of these things, but it's definitely the start of something, and he can always, as we talked about, they have decent wave clear, they can splinter blast, they can fissure, they can maybe lock someone inside their base, they're gonna try to get a tower instead, which I do like, you have to, you have to try and get a win where you can, and buy time. They, oh gosh, they actually need to wait a few, if they can wait like 30 seconds, they're gonna lose the tower, but if they could wait 30 seconds, he wouldn't have the Aegis anymore. It's very close for TC with the timing on this Aegis going down, and it's, oh, how long does he have? Okay, yeah, he has like 20 seconds. So if they can time this right, they might be able to get both of his lives, but it's not looking like that's gonna be the case. Because... Oh gosh. I think it's GG. I wouldn't be surprised if they call it now. Um, they've got a few buybacks that they can use, but I wouldn't be surprised if the GG call is coming out. And I think the wraparound was a nice attempt, but there was, I, I don't know how much chance there was that would actually work. Trying to take out Bulba on the back lines just, I mean, wasn't enough. And you have to get the Dazzle, otherwise he stops all of your attempts at killing people. So, they they know. I think Ewol's probably just taking a few seconds to decide on what will be their next play in the next game, whether it's just Ben Huskar or not. Dyer's middle barracks, Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Radio. 
I mean, I think it was pretty obvious that the husk girl was coming out. I think maybe Ewolves weren't expecting it because it wasn't that fourth pick. It was the fifth instead. Or they thought that they had a strategy to play against it, right? We also don't know. This could be Ewolves saying, let's actually test our metal against a husk girl. Uh, we've seen teams do that before. So that could have been the case. But either way, I think getting rid of that combo, not letting Digital Chaos have heroes they're so comfortable with. I mean, I feel like Aoi was one of the first people to 